The following programme is a tribute to former England and Bolton footballer Nat Lofthouse, who died at the weekend at the age of 85. Welcome to a programme that dwells on the life and career of one of the truly great players of the 40s and 50s. He was the king of the all-star centre forwards. With his pace, strength and phenomenal heading power, he was a menace to any defence, domestic or international. And he is still with the same club he joined as a lad in 1939. Nat Lofthouse has served Bolton Wanderers in almost every role, from player to president. As a player, he had a phenomenal strike rate and an incredible number of his goals were scored with his head. His first on his England debut against Yugoslavia was a mere side foot flick, but his second was almost inevitably a header. What a way to set out on an England career. In 1952, he earned the title The Lion of Vienna after his heroic performance against the Austrians. In his 33 games for England, he scored 30 goals. He could do it for club and country. He was named Footballer of the Year, not just for his skill, but for his conduct and sportsmanship too. In 1958, he scored both goals for Bolton as they won an emotional FA Cup final against Manchester United. The return to Burnham Park brought Bolton to a standstill. The fans were ecstatic, hailing their heroes, led by the man who was already a football legend. Nat Lofthouse can reflect on a life in soccer that is rich with memories and achievement, and during which he has gained enormous respect. The summer of 1997 saw Bolton Wanderers ready to move into the 20th century with their brand new Reebok Stadium. But the legend of Nat Lofthouse lives on. Now, it's a real pleasure to have you with us. Thanks for indeed for coming. Could you ever, with all your years at association with Bolton, ever um, thought of something like the Reebok Stadium? Well, not I didn't to think about that because the Reebok Stadium is something special. Mm -hmm. I don't think you've seen it yet, have you? No, I haven't. Well, when you see, I've it, heard you about say it. This is the the one, and it is the one in Britain. I'm certain of, and I'm certain on the continent, because even the continental people have come over to have a look at it and say, we've got nothing like this back home. It's all changed since the early days of uh, young Nat Lofthouse when he was a lad in Bolton. Oh, crikey! I'll say it has. Hasn't it? Very, very. Hey? In fact, a lot of people have said it, but. Uh, I never in my wildest dreams ever thought that Bolton Wanderers were having a stadium like this. No, no. We're going to take you back to those early days when you were a lad. <coughs> you had a brother, Tommy, didn't you? Yes. And he was Tom. a footballer. Yes, he was Tom. a centre half, wasn't he? Uh, yes, Tom and Dick had two yeah, brothers. Yeah. And, uh, unfortunately, they're not with us at the moment. They're both uh, dead. Uh, but they were. Tom was a good footballer. Dick was a good footballer. But uh, I used to watch Bolton Wanderers even as a kid. Did you? Sure. I used to climb up and pinch in in those days. Up the IPA bar, the Bolton people will know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and uh, just have a good look at uh, my favourites, who were Westwood and Milsom and Gosling and players like that. You went to Castle Hill School, didn't you? Sure. And that's where Tommy Lawton was uh, a student at one point. No, I, I think uh, th there's been a little bit mistake about this. Tommy went to sort of Falls Road. Oh, I see. I didn't go to Falls Road. I went to Castle Hill, and I ah, think that's right. where the difference has been made. That, uh, that some people thought I went to Falls Road. And uh, I was obviously at school with Tommy, and Tommy came to Castle Hill, which Tommy But you're never... a great fan of Tommy's, weren't you? Oh, sure, sure. A big fan of Tommy's. I can remember on the bus station at uh, Moor Lane many, many, many years ago, and I was playing for the town team, and Tommy Lawton was playing for Everton in those days. And uh, I met him at the bus, and I said, can I have your autograph, Mr Lawton? And he said, uh, who are you? And I said, I, I'm not laughing. He said, I've heard about you in the town team. And his words to me there were... Keep putting the ball up back in that lad. And I've never forgot those words. I'll never forget that interview. <laughs> Incredible. Sure. There was a Mr. Cole who was quite important in your early life, wasn't yes, there? Yes, Bert Cole. He was another guy. He was another guy. Very interested in the Bolton Boys Federation and things like that and uh, really helping youngsters on, you know. They were great guys. There's quite a lot of guys like that in Bolton, mm. like there is in every town. And you play for Bolton Schools? Yeah, I play for Bolton Schools. And I got once, I got picked for, to play for the Lancashire School Boys once, mm. but only once. I don't know why. 
but uh, it didn't worry me. I played for Bolton Town team, and that's all that mattered to me. And the mayor of Bolton at that time was a Mr. Entwistle, wasn't he? Was he not yeah. a director of the football club? Uh, he had a very big connection, yes, he was a director. <laughs> <laughs> and what you're trying to say now is just because uh, I was a Bolton lad and no, but no, 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 like no, what I was thinking was it was he that eventually took your, it suggested you might like to go to Bolton or to oh, Bolton sure, Park. sure, sure. Uh, he was a very big friend uh, in those days of mine. But uh, he took me to sort of Bolton Wanderers and I, I signed on for Bolton Wanderers. I can always remember that. I signed on for Bolton Wanderers the day after war broke out, <laughs> September 4th, 1939. <laughs> and that was my first introduction to being a player of Bolton Wanderers or being on the s s ground staff of Bolton I Wanderers. suppose in many ways it was the worst time to go because things just fell apart after that, didn't they, really? I know it sounds horrible. Uh, I, I was lucky. All through my career I'd be lucky because the war started. There was about eight of the players went off to, to sort of uh, mm. soldier in the war and I think I got my chance then. There's just a little bit of football then, but eventually uh, they had like a north and south in those days. And uh, I played with some good players. I played against Bill Shankly and players like that, you know. Yeah. I learned a lot, but I got a chance only through the war being gone and mm. both one of those players going off to war. You became a Bevin boy, didn't you? Yes, I went down to Bevin boy and had four years down the pit. And uh, but I think we should, for people that might be watching this, wondering what the devil of Bevan boy is. During the war, you could either go in the service or sometimes you, you allocated decided that you to would be a go Bevin down boy. as a minor. I was, I was allocated to be a Bevin boy. Uh, Ernest uh, Bevin was the man right. who started uh, That's right. Mm. And uh, my two brothers, they went off to war. And uh, I enjoyed it down the pit. I really and truly enjoyed it. I got fit. Did you really? Yes, I did, honestly. I met some great characters. I met some great guys. I met some great people who had two feet on the floor, who called a spade a spade. Mm. And that sounds funny, but I really enjoyed four years with them. And, of course, the guys that you were working with were all Bolton fans, weren't they? Most of them, yes. Yes, most of them Bolton how fans. Did you, how did you get on with them, and what was your daily routine? Well, I used to go down the pit at 6 o'clock in the morning, and then if we were playing on a Saturday, I'd go down to uh, leave Bolton at half past four, get down the pit at 6 o'clock, come up at uh, 1 o'clock, and the Bolton coach would wait outside the pit head for me. <laughs> I'd get in the coach and go and play, because it was mostly northern clubs, Everton, Blackpool, Burnley, Liverpool, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I used to play that way. That's so they used to rib you? Not really, no. If you, if you, if you probably had a little on bit of more dirty me as you know, we don't have a good share of life. But, uh, <laughs> no, I enjoyed those days, though. I really enjoyed it. Do you remember a match against, was it the first time you played against Berry? Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, I only remember it, uh, I think we won about 4-1 or something like that. And I was lucky enough to score two goals. Of uh, course, mm. uh, I thought, like, oh, good God, I'm in heaven now. <laughs> Oh, and it was heaven to me. Because you made your debut when you were just 15 years of age, didn't you? That's right. That's yeah. right. I, a very young age. And what are the folks, your mum and dad, think about this? I mean, were, th were they very pro the idea? It's funny, becoming your father a professional father wasn't really a football fan, although you're very proud that uh, I started to play. But there was, like, as I said, there was four brothers all together. There was Edward, there was Dick, there was Tom. But Edward died very young. Tom and Dick, they played football for the thingy. I played football, and my father and mother then started to get interested in football and yeah. uh, I really got interested too you know really and truly I used to think that I, just sitting watching was a big thrill for me but when I got playing with a BWSC what about all the training did you enjoy that too I enjoyed everything with Bolton Wanderers football did you club. yeah I think Bolton Wanderers to me are the finest club in the world and to a lot of people they are and I, I wouldn't play for any other club I'd do everything over again same way with the same club and I mean you're so good with headers, you know, you, you, that was a, did, that, didn't Mr. Cole start that? Didn't he teach yes. you how to do that in yeah, the first place? Up against the wall, like with a tennis ball or something like that. Yeah, you know, keep it heading it up. Yeah, but uh, I could do three things, and I'll tell you a story when uh, the first international game I played. Yeah, and we drew two each, I think it was, and it was Yugoslavia down at Highbury, and I scored both the goals. And the following Saturday, I think we were playing Chelsea. This was on a Wednesday. The following Saturday we were playing Chelsea and I had a stinker. And as the coach, George Taylor, a lovely guy, he used to meet us at the door, whether you'd won, lost or not, I don't know, a well played lad. And as I came in, he says, I passed eight Monday morning, Lofty. And I said, I passed eight Monday morning, George. I said, that's, that's a day off, isn't it? This was three days after I played for England. He said, it is for the rest of them, not for thee. And he, he spoke just like that. And I came in Monday morning and he was dead, dead on half past eight. 
And he said, that probably wondering why I've sent for the loft here. I says, well, I was getting a little bit big-headed then, because I'd scored both goals for England. He said, well, I'll tell you. He said, I saw the onset, he tried to do something they can't do. I says, what's that, George? He says, play football. And it's as true as God is my judge. He said, Nat, I'm telling you now to your face, you can do three things reasonably well. And he stressed the word reasonably. He said, you can run, you can shoot, and ahead. And he says, just keep doing them three things. He said, because as long as they play with Matthews and Finney, that's all you need to do. I never, ever forgot that. <laughs> Best <laughs> advice I've ever been given in my life. Can you remember the first match in which you played with uh, Stanley Matthews? <sighs> Now that's going back to a wee bit. For it is because it was, I think it was against the army, wasn't it? You played for the FA. I, I played the, the, yeah, the football league eleven was that's in those right, days. Yes. I think it was at, I think, I think it was at Wolverhampton. I think. Uh, I think you lost seven uh, five. But you scored like four that. goals. Yes, I know like that. Yeah. I know. I played uh, against with Matthews and uh, Finney when we beat to the Irish League at Wolverhampton, and we won. I think it was seven one, and I scored six of them. I do remember that. All from these two guys. That was all. Yeah. And, uh, but when did you first become aware of the, the, the Matthews legend? After I played with him the first time. Really? Yeah. yeah. And I, I just realised that uh, there was only one thing. Just get round the box now, because he'll get down the byline, he'll get to the corner flag, and he'll put the ball over, lace away so it won't hurt. And he used to tell me that. I never <laughs> lace that. away so that you can get on the He used to lace the ball in those <laughs> days, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but not honestly, but uh, they were <coughs> fantastic players to play with. Oh, yeah. anyway. And Finney as well. I mean, could oh, you yeah. could you match one against the other? Could you say you couldn't which was compare the because they were both totally different. Were they both great players? Mm. No, I was a lucky lad. Uh, I played with two of the greatest players I've ever known, and two of the nicest guys, by the way. Too. And yes, I, well, we have met them both, and sure. you're absolutely right. Sure. Uh, but the people that play football at that time all are. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah <coughs> to but I mean, Matthews was so accurate with his crosses, oh, wasn't yeah. he? He was unbelievable. I mean, obviously. Uh, I'm not jumping the gun, but when you saw the 53 Cup final and the ball he made for Stan Mortensen, dear old Stan, who's not with us at the moment, but unbelievable. You talk about the, the, the first international you played against Yugoslavia and yeah. you two to all. What was it like being picked for England the first time? Uh, I don't know. I just couldn't tell. I was scared stiff, I think. Uh, Were you? Yeah, really yeah. trying. And I said, I'm a meeting. I played against, like, in the football against Matthews with Blackpool. And then with Tom Finney, but to play with them was a totally mm. different uh, outline. And I played quite a few times with them, and they were unbelievable. How did you find out that you were selected for England? Well, I first found out, uh, I think I'd been married, what, three years, and we'd got one son, and then we had another one on the way. And I think it was Alva Liddell, I'm not certain about it, but I think Alva Liddell reading the six o'clock news. <laughs> and he read, and he read my name, and I couldn't believe it. And I just knelt on the rug and put both hands together, and I thought, you can't fail, Lofty. Because <laughs> I've got a mortgage with the Halifax Bill, this tied to £900, you see. And I'm paying about £6 a month, and we got £30 for playing for England those days. £6 a month you paid? I was paying were, to yeah. the building site, and I got 30 quid for playing for England. Less tax, of course. Yes, of course, yeah. But, uh, oh, no, that's the first time I, I thought, what a lucky lad you were. And what were you earning with Bolton? Uh, most I ever earned at Bolton one was £20. I think it was 15, 18 pounds, and then 20 pounds. Yeah, so I was well paid because my father was a coal bagger getting two pounds, 15 shillings a week. So I was a lucky lad. So, Nats, you'd, you'd got your first international cap anyway, but how are things with Bolton at that time? Were they doing well? Yeah, I think we always did well because uh, I think uh, during that year, every football in the land got the same money. Hmm. You know what I mean? There was no sort of people who said, well, he's getting a lot more than me or he's doing this. No, I think we all got the same money, which I thought was good money, hmm. so don't get hmm. me wrong. Uh, and I'd do it all again for the same money. What about the standard of play at Burnham Park? Was, were, you, were you doing well in the league? Yeah, we were doing okay. We were getting good gates, uh, and then when we won the World, let's see the World Cup, won the, the cup in '58, all the players cost ten pounds on sign on, hundred and ten pound team they called us. <laughs> now that wasn't bad, and you know there were some good players in that team. Some great well, before we, we'll talk about the '58 cup final uh, a little later on, but let's talk about the '53 cup final now. Yeah. Uh, against Blackpool. Now that was the Coronation Cup final, wasn't sure, it? Sure. Sure. 
Well, there you had, you got two guys who <coughs> was always my idols. Well, they were all idols, really. Stan Matthews, Stan Mortensen, Harry Gosling, uh, Harry Johnson, great yeah. pals who played for England same time as I did. Of course. I was lucky enough to play with them and uh, they were great guys and uh, really great players. And I thought, at the end of the game, I was downhearted, obviously, but when you look at it, and there were seven goals in a, a Wembley Cup final, I think the people got the money's with, didn't did they? Did they not? And, uh, but it was the matter, I mean, you went out, you, you took the lead, you were well in, in front at one point, weren't you? I think we were winning 3 1, 17 minutes to go. Mm. And then suddenly. With 10 men? Yes. And then suddenly that man Matthews uh, came on the scene and altered the situation. And that's where Stan Mortensen got three goals to hat trick at Wembley. I said to Stan Matthews on one occasion, that was the Matthews final. He said, no, he said, that was the Mortensen final. Well, that's Stan, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't no, it? Uh, everyone said it was Stan Matthews final, and obviously. Stan put the ball over, as I say, which yeah. Stan enjoyed, and he, he knew the, he was just where he was going to put the ball. Yeah. But, uh, no, it was a... For anyone watching, and if he wasn't sort of a Paris to each side, it was a great foot, uh, cup mm. final. Mm. Yeah. Can you remember travelling down to it? How did that How, how did they...? Yeah, we, we went down. I think we went down on the Thursday or the Friday, and, uh, oh, yeah, the manager, Mr Bill Redden, he did everything possible. By Sharabang? Yes, oh, by, yeah, by yeah, coach, just yeah. a, quite, I think it was only about five or six miles from Wembley. And no, he did everything right, correctly. And unfortunately, our left half, Harry Bell, pulled a muscle about, after mm. about 25 minutes, half an hour. And that uh, there was no subs in those days. Mm. And it, we just had to carry on. And he came back, the brave guy did, and carried on, made it worse, of course, but still nevertheless a, a, a cripple. What's it like to lose a cup final? <coughs> I, I didn't, I, it was downhearted, obviously, I think we all were, but I, I looked at it the other way. How many players have said they played in the cup final? Yes. So I looked at it that way, and I've got a medal, all right, it's a cup loser's medal. And I thought, well, I got that for that Saturday, which normally I've been sat watching the books. Yeah. Uh, someone else playing. No, I, 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 I'm, I wish we'd have got it, I wish we'd have won, of course, but... Mm. No. And, of course, the Busby Babes were now just about <coughs> emerging, weren't they, as a real yeah. force? Yeah, uh, coming up into the sort of, uh, well, I can remember playing with Tommy, Tommy Taylor and Roger Byrne in the 54, 55 games mm. for England. Uh, I remember Duncan Evans scoring a great goal at, uh, in Germany when they beat Germans 3-1, I think it was. I remember playing with uh, Tommy How good Taylor. were they? Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. No, honestly, uh, as I've just said before, Tommy Taylor was out of this world. Roger Byrne was a great captain. Duncan Edwards was, he could do anything. Really? He, he could do anything. Tell uh, us about him. And what, 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 he, he's so versatile. Yeah, he, he's so versatile. You could put him in goals and he'd put a good show up. You could put him outside right and he'd still play a good show. You're outside left, centre forward, anywhere. And I mean that sincerely. He was full of life. He was a great guy to be out with, to be in a team with. He was full of fun. He was. Uh, and and he was only 18, wasn't he? Pat, yes. Only 18. Yeah, yeah. And when he, I think he scored the winning goal. Not the winning goal. Yeah, I think we won 3-1 against the German side in uh, Berlin. And he scored a goal. And, oh, he was so happy at night. And we had a little drink at night. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> uh, a little one. A little one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> What, tell us about, I mean, the, you always, whenever I talk about Nat Laughter, they say, oh, yeah, the Lion of Vienna. The Lion of Vienna. <coughs> I think, really. Now, that was the, that was the second time you played against Austria, because yeah, you played yeah. against them over here, didn't sure, you? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and uh, then that was the there. tour. There was the sort of uh, the team in Europe, which we were led to believe. And uh, I, I can remember, it was a, a great game, uh, I think. I think. Jackie Sewell scored the, they were winning one down, Jackie Sewell, Sewell scored the equaliser. Mm. I think I got the second one, 2-1, one, and then it was sort of end-to-end -end and uh, a great game, and Tom Finney was, was once again, as I said, you know, they got the ball, beat a couple of guys from a, a corner from them, and he beat two uh, guys and slipped it through for me. I just run through and lucky enough to put the winner in. And we won, uh, as I said, 3-2. Because you, you were on your own, weren't you? I mean, you, you were racing towards the goalkeeper. I remember this so well. Yeah, and, and because they'd been attacking goes. Yes, that's right. And, uh, fact, and you I had to, so. and the goalkeeper came at you, and then you... Sure. Yeah, but sure. what an important goal. 
Well, they're all important goals. Yeah, but that was a, no that was an goals. important goal, wasn't it? Really, because well, uh, yes, uh, uh, the, the, by this time the Austrians, the crowd were very much against you. They that's were, right. That's right. They? That's right. I was proud for the uh, English soldiers what were there. Yeah. They were cheering and things like that. Because that was behind the Iron Curtain in those days, wasn't <coughs> it? Correct. Mm, sure. But uh, no, uh, when you're talking about them now, uh, happy days. Yeah. Really happy days. You know? That was on tour. That was a, a, a part of a, a three country tour, wasn't it? You yeah. Tour, Italy. We, We'd been to it Austria uh, and Switzerland. Uh, Italy, Austria, and Switzerland. Yeah. And, uh, uh, well, tell us what you thought about the, the the way the Continentals played their football. I thought there was very good individual players, mm. and I thought that uh, really they'd have been better if they'd have played like we played as a team. Uh, and that that's not decrying anyone uh, mm. in present day football, but we played as a real team because we had a, a manager in those days, Sir Walter Winterbottom, as he is oh, yeah, now, yeah. and. Uh, he was a great manager, I thought, really and truly. Um, in what way? He made you believe you were doing something proud. You were playing for your country. You got to stand up and wave that white, that Union Jack flag. He made you think, and when you ran out with that shirt or with a three lions, that you were as proud as, proud as hell, mm. and you'd die for him. And he got him playing that way. And sometimes, like he'd say to me, that uh, when you get the ball there, he said, just give it to Matthews. And he said, you just get around the spot. He said, he'll get the ball over for you. <laughs> and he said, all right, and I said, all right, Walter. Really? You know, yes, honestly. He had, the, you know, he had the confidence to do that, and that was him. Because he made everyone feel as though they were the men for that job, or they wouldn't be there. And that, that was something like... Yeah. And when you went on that kind of tour, you know, Italy, and then Austria, and then yeah. Switzerland, um, yeah. how did the FA look after you? Were you? Oh, yeah, first class. Really? Yeah, first class, in every, in every shape and form. There was no ifs, no buts, and all the lads like. Well, I used to go down like to London from the northern parts of uh, England with Matthews and with uh, Tom Finney or mm. whoever was playing down there. Yeah. But uh, no, I think Walter Winderbar had some magic about him. He was a great guy. A couple of the other guys in the team, uh, Billy Wright, of course, I suppose, was yeah, in the oh team. Yeah, well, and uh, Alf Ramsey. Bill, uh, Billy Wright, central, uh, central half. Alf Ramsey, right back. He could just. What was Alf like as a player? He was another, you could, you could always tell when people, well I could, I don't know why, that people were born to be managers. Alf Ramsey was. Really? Like, you could be playing a game, and he'd come to me at half time, he said, Nat, he says, like, just on the free kick, if we get this, go to the far post and wait till I kick it, and then come make your running. Little things like that. He'd, he'd weighed his own game up, he'd got his own game all organised. Yeah. <clears throat> and then he was trying to help me to sort of make, you know, make the free kick pay off. And uh, it came, it paid off once, and I scored off a free, off a free kick. Went off, put over. But uh, he, had, as I say, he could have his own game in order and help other people. Mm. And I think that was only through Walter Winterbottom instilling in everyone that we were all getting the same money, we were all the same class, we were playing for one another. Mm. You played for one country, and that's England. Because Billy Wright was a legend at that time, oh, anyway, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, Billy, well. I don't think, really, and no insult to anyone, uh, Billy was, well, he was Billy Wright. There'll never be another Billy Wright. Really? No, he, he was great, Billy. Really great. And funny enough, uh, I used to like to play against him when we played for Wolverhampton, and uh, either at Wolverhampton or at Bolton, because uh, if there was one f small flaw in Billy's game, it was up there, uh, the crosses. Uh, and, yeah. uh, and I think that was really my strength rather as a footballer at my heading yeah and uh, i used to sort of fancy chances against Billy. well <laughs> no that, that sounds horrible uh, so i was beginning <laughs> that I, I don't mean it that way no I but i used don't. to fancy my chance yes. if there was a cross giving over you know yeah and uh, yeah but uh, they were all good it's yeah. funny they were all great guys and the, neil franklin was a great guy another person we're talking about another great center half yeah that's all right but they were all great guys. After mm. the game, it was a whole, are you having a drink, lads? You know, like, were you going yeah. for a holiday? How's the family? And I'll never forget those things. Never. You've talked a lot about the individual skills of some of the Continentals, the Austrians and maybe the Italians too, but um, what about the famous Hungarians that came over and uh, taught us how to play football again? 
Uh, I never played against them, Gary, yeah, no. Andre, but uh, some of the players, Di Stefano and uh, Puskas, as you say, like uh, they were sort of, in those days, in a class of their own. Mm. Uh, as you also, when they came to Wembley, and they, they, seemed, they really sort of slaughtered England a bit, wasn't it? Was well, it an enormous disappointment to you that you, you, you were not playing in that game? Yeah, it was, really. I'd have liked to have played. Mm. Uh, obviously, I didn't, uh, but uh, I saw it, and I watched the game, and... I thought, crikey, I wish I could play like that. Mm -hmm. Really and truly, because there was one goal in the, I think it was 7-2, was it 7-2? 6-3, 6-3. Six three. Six six three. Three. And when Puskas pulled it back from the byline and hit it all in one movement. Ah, incredible, from one foot to the other, wasn't yes, it? Yes, without even sort of, you know, as, as though it wasn't hard. Have, you, have anyone in this country had skills like that? Well, I think Matthews had the skill and Finney. I mm. think um, Wilfie Manning had skills, uh, Ray's Carter had skills, but I never saw that done before or since the way you did it. Why have we not been concerned about developing individual skills in this country, do you think? I'm no. going back sort of years ago when we're talking about now. But mm. the, the grounds didn't give you the sort of uh, uh, skill to do that. It ah, was like yes. about that deep in mud, mud sometimes, especially the winter season, you yes. know, from sort of late November to sort of uh, end of February. There was a, the grounds weren't all that brilliant. No. They're not like they are now. And I think, like, to attempt to do that, like, on those grounds, it, if you could do it. You now, Matthews, it, it bought Matthews a bit. I mean, I, we used to like playing against Blackpool and Preston when the ground was about that deep in, <laughs> in mud because it, it stopped them too for sort of doing the yes. uh, expert things. But, yeah. uh, no, the Hungarians were something that I think we learned a lot from them. Mm. I think we did. did you, um, yeah, we learned it. We, we enjoyed watching it. But yeah. did we inwardly learn? I think the players themselves thought, yeah, I wish we could do that. Mm. Or I wish I could do that. Or I did. I and did we go out and try and develop that skill, do you think? I don't know. Uh, it's something I can't answer because I could never, ever. I would prefer to beat a man either with speed yeah. or up in the air. But I, I was never a great ball man, a ball controller. Well, you were told what you could do and that's what you should do. And I stuck to it because yes. we had players, I played with players who could do that yes. for me yes. and help me to do that. Yeah. And that's where we're talking about, like, uh, when it comes to Tommy Taylor and Duncan Edwards mm. and Roger Byrne, they could do that. Because Matt Busby, had, that, that was a one hell of a side, that uh, the Busby Babes. Was the nomination as the Footballer of the Year, was that one of the greatest honours that you've had? Oh, yeah. I think that was the greatest. It uh, was. Yeah. There was two which stand out in my mind. Obviously that. And then sort of... Uh, Winning, helping to win the cup for both ones with ten yes. other guys. Yes, I think yes. those two were the things which. Tell us about like the football of the year first of all, because I mean that was there was a dinner you were made the presentation just before. That was the night before the cup final. Uh, the cup final, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and oh. I didn't get drunk, as I said. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I got drunk the following night, you know, with the football. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was something which uh, you know, Sally Matthews had won, and Tom Finney had won, mm. uh, Billy Wright had won, and I felt like. As though you crack it, I'm in that same league. Yes. You know what I mean? Of it course. gives you that feeling that, uh, yeah, I've been made the football of the year, like, and I, I was really, I was totally proud. How did your wife and family uh, accept all these honours? Well, they were over the moon. Were they? Ah, sure. They were over the moon. Was she a tremendous support to you? Oh, correct. When you were playing? Out of this world. Yeah, sure. Uh, was she interested? <coughs> very much so. Very much so. And she would tell me when I had a bad game or a good game. Did she? Game. Would you know, really? She would tell me, and. Uh, dear Alma, she's not with us now, of course. Mm. Uh, <coughs> yeah, and I used to say, all right, love, all right, love. But, uh, <laughs> and she knew nothing about it. But uh, no, uh, I learned a lot from playing with great players like as mm. we were just talking about, mm. Lily Wright and Ramsey mm. and mm. Finney. I mm. learned a lot. Although I couldn't do what they could do, I, f I felt good because I could just finish off what they'd done. Yes. And that's yeah. what we played as a team. You're all making a contribution to the same men anyway. Correct. Yeah, right. yeah. Th that's the same like George Sale and Bill Ridden. Uh, but well, let, let's talk about the second great honour uh, achievement, the, the 1958 Cup final. Oh. <coughs> the only thing I, I'm really sorry about that is obviously uh, we had to play so soon after that terrible tragedy at uh, mm. Munich. I wish really we, we hadn't been in that final to play against a, a team which was nowhere near like the team what could have been. Uh, how long was there between the disaster and, and it the was about final? It was in, what was it, February, 
was it the end of May? Yeah, so three months. Three, three months. Yeah, really three months. It didn't give like some of Jim, Jimmy Murphy. There was such an, a wave of emotion at that time, oh. wasn't there? I think Bolton were really unlucky because mm. I think everyone in the land and abroad, all over the world, wanted Man United to win the cup. Yes. Because of that terrible leader. Of course. And I think deep down, I probably thought that myself sometimes. You know, I thought really? crikey. Yeah. You know what a different game it would have been. Mm. We don't know what the result of the. No, 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 no. But. Uh, it was a proud moment to play and win the cup, but I, that just saddened it because I thought everyone wanted a United to win. Hmm. And we scored both goals. Yeah. Can you remember them? I can remember. One with them, the yeah. yeah. I can remember the first one, and I remember the second one very, very clearly. Tell me. But, <laughs> 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 and it's funny, you know. Uh, <laughs> I see Harry Craig, as I say, quite a lot, and he said it to me like he says I'd have done the same to you, Loft. He said if you'd have been positioned it'd have been reversed, he said I'd put you back at net. Which is what you did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I was already grateful and thankful that he wasn't hurt. Yes. But uh, I thought the referee like, and I turned around and he was pointed the other way to where I was going. Mm. Now if it had been the other end and he'd been pointed that way, I thought he was sending me off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I, I'm glad we won two now. Mm. I really was glad, uh, but uh, as I said, it wasn't the same side what we could have played. No. Uh, so there wasn't the same joy at winning? Uh, uh, there wasn't, if you were honest with yourselves, and I was, because I lost some of the great guys there. Mm. Uh, and I think all the players did on our team realised that it could have been a difficult, a more different mm. and mm. harder game if they'd have been the Busby Babes. Of mm. course, one never knows that, really. And that, I always remember one thing after the game, this Sir Matt Busby coming in and walking round the dressing room and congratulating every Bolton Wonders player. Mm. And I just thought, good God, three months ago, he just escaped death. That's right. And he was still at Wembley coming round and had the time and the guts and the courage and the, I don't know, to shake hands. Were you ever, ever tempted to, yeah, were you ever tempted at any point to, <coughs> to leave Bolton and play for someone else? I think I only got one feeling of leaving Bolton once, and that was when, just after we the Italian games, mm. I got to, there was a guy came over and asked me would I be interested in playing for Florentina. Now, whether, oh, really? Yeah, whether this was a, a hoax or what, I do not know it, but I never heard anything to follow it up. But it, I did, in those, you didn't hear of agents in those days. But I, I think it was after the Italian game when we played in Florence. Really? Uh, and then we went on, as you say, as we've mentioned, to the other countries. But I just got one. But I, I never had any feelings no. to play with anyone else because why? I said to myself, you mm. know, I, we've won the cup for, with Bolton. I've played for England with Bolton. I'm getting recognised with Bolton. Mm. And I just thought, I'm getting the same money as what I got anywhere else <laughs> with Bolton. <laughs> so I just thought, why leave Bolton? And then when you look at the, the crowds we got and the fans we have, they're the best team in the world. <laughs> but if some Italian side like Fiorentino had come to uh, to Bolton for you, um, would the chairman have told you? Do you think? I think he would. Yeah. Uh, because it was a Mr. Norman Banks, and uh, that is one thing that we, we've always had all through my career with the club. And it's going back a long time. The directors have always been very, very fair. Mm. They've told you the position and left it to your decision, or they said we've said no, he cannot approach you. And I think that that was great. Mm. Them, but. I think just then I just I was very young. I don't know what would have happened if they'd have come to me uh, personally and said, "Look, look the, the, the club has said if you want to move, you can move, Lofty. It's up to you." I thought I'd have had to have a chat with my wife, you know, because if you were paying, you bought a nine hundred pounds off the Halifax Village Society, <laughs> right? You think <laughs> <laughs> they could pay for that? Possibly, I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, I've often wondered with that myself. Well, I remember talking to someone, and they were saying that, um, th that Italians didn't want to be strikers because they always felt that they, uh, they, they might have a short career because the defences in Italy were so tight. I do. And they used to uh, how, do you, how do you think you'd have fared against Italian defences? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Probably in my style of play, I'd have probably been sent off more times than what I'd have played. <laughs> but I don't know. But uh, I played against them, as I said, like uh, yeah. more than... They didn't like that to sort of... Uh, not rough play, but hard play. They didn't like it. No, they didn't, they? No. no and, uh, Were you ever sent off for uh, that? No, I was never sent off. Uh, and I'll tell you a story, which is a true story. I got booked once in my lifetime. 
and I'll tell you why I got booked. I thought the throw-in was Bolton Wanderers, and it wasn't. The referee gave it the other way, or the linesman gave it the other way. And I picked the ball up, and I was only about 10 yards from him. And I threw it at, it, at the linesman. And I missed him with about five yards. <laughs> and I'll never forget, we were playing Manchester City, and Roy Paul was the left half, I think, in those days. And the referee said, come here, you. And he said, what's your name? And I looked at him, and Roy Paul said, Lofthouse. Roy Paul answered for him. He said, what's your first name? And he said, Jeffrey, this guy. <laughs> and I looked at Paul, and Paul went like that, you know. And <laughs> no, but I, I got a letter from the FA that the and Nathaniel Loftus asked your future conduct. But I got booked once. That was for, that was the only reason. But <laughs> in those days, we had referees who'd run outside of you, and you know they say, "I saw that Lofty, Don't do it again, please." And you know, nobody ever saw it. The crowd didn't see it. No other player heard him ever. And that was the way the referees used to do it. That was great. I thought he'd yeah. seen what I'd done, and yeah. he just said, "No, if you do it again, or else." And I thought, great. Now yeah, they, they claimed your respect, didn't they? Oh, yes. Yes, they earned it yes. by doing th simple things yeah. like that. Yeah. And, uh, I never forgot that. Never, ever forgot it. But I, I went and had my eyes tested because they were only 10 yards off him and I, I missed him at five. I must have missed something wrong with him. Ah, I got I suppose you had the satisfaction uh, now to playing in the World Cup anyway, the um, 58 sure. Switzerland World sure. Cup. Sure, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed that uh, because um, you know, that was the sort of the, the end of my career coming up to, well, not the end of my career, but mm. that's the plinth of your career when mm. you think you have to have played for everything now. I've played in a World Cup team, I've played in the FA Cup yes, final. Yes, that's right. You know, and I think... I think that you felt, I really felt enjoyed, uh, enjoyable about that. Did you feel at all um, confident that you might do well in the World Cup? Well, yeah, uh, we all did because we'd, I think we had nothing to fear, really. Uh, as I said, we played uh, in the World Cup and I just thought all the teams I more or less played against was we were going to play again. Mm. And I don't think there was anybody, and we got, as I said, when you got players like Matthews and mm. Finney and Wright and great players. You played Belgium, I think, in the first qualifying game. You I think drew, so. And uh, you scored. Yeah, I scored. But uh, there was one game which uh, I didn't really have a good game. That was against, uh, we've just been talking about the Uruguay. Oh, yes, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, uh, because they were good players. Well, in fact, you, 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 you drew with Belgium. I think you beat Switzerland 2-1. Yes. So that, we were now qualified um, that's right. for the, the competition proper. Sure. And that's when you played Uruguay. That's right, Uruguay. Now, they were a bit special, weren't they? they were, were, were they World Cup holders at that point? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was that score then for that? That was going on. Oh, Germany World Cup holders, but they had won the World yes, Cup. Yes, yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, we played against them, and uh, I enjoyed it, and I think uh, I scored one goal, I'm not certain. Mm. I think we scored one goal. I scored one goal, I think that goal was scored the 30th goal. Mm. Uh, oh, I see, yes, of your... in your. I think it was. Yes, and in fact, I'm nearly certain it was. And that, that was like... Uh, yes, it was. I think you, you got to the quarterfinals, that's when you played yeah, Uruguay. Yeah, yeah. Was there enormous disappointment uh, oh, yeah. that, that, oh, we, yeah. that we'd failed against sure, them? Because sure. they were a standard of football they yeah. were playing was quite sensational, sure, wasn't it? Sure. No, I don't think there was any grievance or I don't think there was any grumbling. I think there was a lot of sadness and disappointment. But uh, they were the better team and the better team won on the day. Because you played 33 games for England and you scored 30 goals, which sure. is a fantastic strike rate, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, yeah. Yeah. Has it ever been, that rate has ever been uh, equaled? Well, I think Sam Martin's had, a, as the best uh, individual, uh, I think it's 26 goals and 20, 26 games, 25 goals. Sam Martin, now that needs some beating, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You know, and then I think, uh, as to uh, Bobby beaten it, obviously, Bobby Charlton and Gary Link, I think they've beaten Yeah, but 49 goals in 106 games, you see. Yeah, but it's still 49 goals in, yes, uh, that's true. in oh, the yeah. upper century, yeah. you know, that, yeah, that I needs know, some doing. Do you think you should have played more for England? 33 games doesn't seem a lot, but I mean, you play some. Of course, in those days, like you say. Uh, there weren't so many games. Yeah, there was just like the uh, Scotland, Ireland, uh, Welsh mm. games, and then obviously the World Cup, which many, you know, but now they've a lot more games, haven't they? Mm. But uh, no, I was quite happy. I, I would have loved to have played more, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But uh, I enjoyed every game I played. Yeah, I thought it was worth it. 
Who were your main rivals for that position of centre forward then at that time? Well, uh, I always felt that uh, Walter Winderbott or the English FA who was picking the team could have put the, the names in, about six names. There'd be Tommy Lott because I just took over from Tommy. Mm. Then there was Jackie Milliburn and then there was Albert Stubbins. Yes. Then there was Roy Bentley. And then there was one more. There was about five or six of us and you could have, uh, and Marty of course. Yes. Put them all in the hat, pick one out and I think <laughs> you'd have got a, a good centre for it. So, yes, I was lucky. I enjoyed it. Who was the, the, the toughest goalkeeper you faced? The toughest goalkeeper? Yeah, the one, the, the one you, not feared most, but the one well, you I, felt was the most difficult to beat. I don't know really the toughest because uh, I think one of the, one I admired really, and I, I admired them all, but the one I had most respect for, I think, was the Wolverhampton goalkeeper. And I'm just trying to think of his damn name. <laughs> And uh, he played in the played uh, Burt Williams. Yes. And he played in the same team with me for quite a few times. And then there was the Totten Oxford goalkeeper. Mm. Uh, now they're all good goalers, but mm. I thought Burt was always just one jump ahead. When I say one jump, or one stride. Yes. He'd just take the ball in front of me or just behind me when I was missing it or whatever. But uh, they were all good goalkeepers. Of course, it was much tougher for a goalkeeper in those days, wasn't it? Oh, crikey. But, but you see. <laughs> They always think like it's the, the player who was giving the goalkeeper some stick. I used to get a lot of stick. You know, I've had like an elbow in back of the ear, like, and it doesn't, it's not very helpful. And <laughs> I've had a few knocks, but I used to go in because they wasn't done like intentionally. It was done, it just your fault for getting in the way of his fists or something like that. Mm. But, oh no, I never cribbed or anything like that. And I didn't expect them to crib. And they didn't. As I've just said, he's had his leg in the cup fan, he said, I'd just done the same to you, Lofty, if it had been you. There were no holes bad, there were nothing, no malice at all about it, and that's what I enjoyed about it. I mean, your your career was really <clears throat> foreshortened because of the injury, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. you would have gone on a, longer than that, obviously. Yeah. But tell us about that, how it all finished. Well, it was uh, against Birmingham, and that was the, what, 1959-60, and mm. uh, they were just come, me and the goalkeeper. It, wa it wasn't to uh, Bert Williams or any of the uh, other goalies who I know. And we just, I just got my leg in the wrong place. It was my mm. fault, a bit too slow. And he just went on it and mm. he broke the sort of uh, fib bone, tib, and it d just finished me. And then I suddenly thought, like, uh, I started trying to make a comeback and I went with one or two reserve games. And then I came back one game and I could tell myself it wasn't there. Uh, I was just missing that split second leap just before. I was just missing that ball that split second mm. after. I was just doing a lot of things, and uh, the club were great with me, and they offered me a, a job like what I like to go on the sort of uh, uh, staff side, mm. and I accepted it. And uh, <coughs> must have been a great disappointment there, because you must have felt that you could have continued for a while playing football. I thought I could, but I'm glad I, I, <coughs> I finished, and I can always say I finished in like in the first division, you know. But, yes. Uh, and I wouldn't like to have gone like into the second division, third division, fourth, or whatever, you know, gone a, a step down, ladder down there each time. I finished my first last game was at uh, in the first division. Mm. Which, uh, the <coughs> what would you have done if the, if the club hadn't offered you a post there behind the scenes? I don't know. Uh, that's one thing I can honestly say. That Were I've you qualified for anything else? I've got a, a big question back yeah. I don't know what I'd have done. I would probably kill myself to get them off me or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, but it didn't it, happen, uh, so there we are. It didn't happen, no. <coughs> but you've actually. Uh, played in almost every role in, uh, in, in, in Bolton, haven't you? You've been a coach, you've been manager, yeah, you've uh, been president, and scout, and uh, scout. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What was it like being a manager? I didn't like it. I was too soft. Uh, I'd lie awake at night on a Friday evening just to tell a ball because he wasn't going to play. And I'd lie there and say, How can I tell him without hurting him? You know, yeah. honestly. Uh, I wasn't cut out to be. I mean, these managers I played, they were nice guys, but they did it in a nice way. And I, I'd have been too soft with them. Mm. And I wasn't a good manager. I could have been a good number two to someone. Yes. I'd get them fit because that's one thing I was. All my career, I was always fit. I could run, shoot, and head and run forever. <laughs> and I never forgot that. But as a manager, no, I was a dead horse. And a scout? Yeah, I've been, I used to go scout. You could identify. Think. Possible yeah, talent. yeah. Well, I think everyone. Yeah, I think mm. uh, everyone could see a good player. Say when they come to Bolton, they say he's not a bad player or he's a good player. 
whatever. I think everyone has a good idea who watches football, whether he's good or bad, whether it goes on or not. I, I don't mm. know, but uh, no, uh, I'm quite happy now. Like uh, I've had a good career. I remember you, you, you were quoted as saying that uh, when you were playing football, football was a pleasure with pay. Yes, it was. Do you feel the players feel that now? Well, yeah, I think they do in a way. I mean, I, I can't alter uh, that. But it's like, it's a different game now, isn't it? Mm. Uh, I know they've still got the same four corner flags and two goals and things like that. But the, the money is different and totally different. And I can remember when we're talking about money, which is a big part in today's football. Mm. When I said I went home and I signed professional forms, we bought one at 17 years of age. And I got two white fivers, the old white fivers. And I went home and we sat down and there was my dad, my mum, our Jeff, uh, our Tom and myself. And I put these two white fivers in. I said, there you are, mum. And my dad looked at it like, and he looked at my mum. And my mother says, where have you got them from that? And my dad looked at me as though I'd pinched him. I said, I've just signed professional forms for Walt Mourners and you got £10. And Walter Foraker, the manager, gave me two white fibres. That was for signing professional forms. And I went and gave my mum up round the tea table. But I never thought, you see, my father was only getting £2.15 shillings a week coal bagging. That was a month's wages to him. And I just put two white fibres on. To what did they do with the £10? Well, it kept us for nearly a month, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so me, that's right. No, I don't know. I just give him mum like I said, there you are, mum like her, you know. But um, I think that was one of the very, very few times I embarrassed my father. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yeah. Looking back on a, on a glittering career, because you, you, you've enjoyed it so much, uh, and you've had so much to enjoy anyway, yeah. what is your, your happiest memory? In football? Yeah. Well... There was, I think the first was when Bolton Wanderers signed the professional mm. at 17. I think the second was winning the cup. I think the third was saying playing for England. Mm. And after that, they were all happy memories. But I think those three, I put them in that order for me to sign for Bolton Wanderers, to win the cup for Bolton Wanderers, or help to win the cup for Bolton Wanderers, mm. and play for England. I think those three things. Are very and how would you like to remember by the fans? As a guy who never gave up and chased everything. I'm a right nice lad. <laughs> <laughs> Nat, thanks so much for joining us. It's been a delight. Thanks for asking me, Dickie. It's Not been at a all. pleasure for me. Oh. Thank you. This programme was a tribute to former England and Bolton footballer Nat Lofthouse, who died at the weekend at the age of 85.